Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by New Stopette, America's leading spray deodorant. The lotion spray deodorant that's like balm to your skin. Boom. There goes perspiration. Now let's all play What's My Line? <laughs> Now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular Broadway columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And tonight, pinch hitting for Fred Allen, whom we all miss very much, is a very charming substitute, the CBS comedian that you all know so very well from television, Mr. Jack Parr. And on my left is the star of three different networks, and there are only three, but she's dickering with the fourth, I understand. <laughs> Arlene Francis. Thank you, John. And on my left, a gentleman who I bless every time I play Scrabble and many times when I don't for his wonderful American college dictionary, Random House's own Bennett Surf. On my left, of course, is our superb panel moderator, whom we panelists still like to refer to, despite all evidence you have seen on this program yourselves, to the contrary, as Honest John Daly. <laughs> Thank you, Bennett. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. It's a very hot night tonight, and we hope things will be heated up some more when we introduce the panel to some tough occupations and some fine people who've come to visit us and brought the occupations with them. We'll have a famous guest challenger a bit later on for these experts of ours, but I think right now it's time for them to meet our first challenger whose line has to be spotted. So will you sign in, please, sir? Dudley? Dudley Woodman, is that right, sir? How are you, sir? Very well, thanks very much. A bit warm. It is a bit warm, isn't it? <laughs> you really shouldn't put on that English accent. It'll just confuse the daylights out of them. Where are you from, sir? Uh, from Stafford von Avon, England. Oh, well, I guess then it's not going to confuse them. <laughs> Actually, we like to let the panel get a closer look at the challenges. So would you be good enough to take a walk down in front of the panelists for me? Mr. Woodman? Pip, pip, Mr. Woodman. <laughs> All right, Mr. Woodman, over here, if you will, and sit down next to me. And I would ask you if you are familiar with our scoring system on the program. Uh, no, I don't think I am. Well, actually, it's very simple. Every time you can properly give the panel a big, loud no answer, we flip a card. And when we flip ten cards, you have won the game. Good. All right, now there remains only one thing to do. Let's let the folks who are at home and those who are in here in the theater with us know exactly what your line is. At this point, I will simply announce that Mr. Woodman is salaried, and we'll begin the general questioning with Miss Arlene Francis. Uh, Mr. Woodman, you say you're from Stratford on uh, Avon or Avon. How do you pronounce it? Avon. Avon. Uh, do you have anything... Uh, is your appearance here in America associated in any way with the opening of the theater tomorrow, or rather Tuesday, at Stratford on Avon in Connecticut? Yes. It is? Yes. Jolly good, what? <laughs> Haven't made any money so far. Uh, are you here in the capacity of goodwill toward this theater? Yes. Is your job in any way theatrical? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Woodman, you come from Stratford. Yes. Well, if you're a representative of Stratford at the opening of Mr. Langner's Stratford job here, would you not possibly be an official of the city of Stratford in Avon? Yes. Well, you must be the highest there. You must be the mayor. That's right. That's right. <laughs> the right honorable mayor said, I thought they'd get it. Actually, I think we'll blame Lawrence Langner for this, but I do think it's wonderful that you're over here to lend the 
presence and your high office to what we all hope is going to be a wonderfully successful Shakespearean center in the United States. The Theater Guild people, Lawrence Lang, they've worked very hard. It's going to be a wonderful theater, and it's great for you to come over here. This is merely a gesture. I will not let the panel have all that satisfaction. We'll flip all the cards. That's all there is to it. And, uh, it's yes, $50, this... not 50 pounds, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, John, uh, I should think that the honorable gentleman would be wearing a chain around his neck. Don't all English mayors wear regalia? Or is that only on state I, occasions? Uh, were you asking if I wore a chain? Yes. Yes, yes I do. A gold chain. Well, you I wear would... a ball and chain, too? <laughs> 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 you have a ball and chain. You very well what I meant, then. <laughs> now, actually, I think uh, we tried very hard to give uh, Mayor Woodman an American accent back of the curtains there for 15 <laughs> minutes, but it didn't work. I afraid it gave too much away. Well, sir, our thanks to you for being our guest, and I hope you have a wonderful visit here in the United States. Thank Good to have you with us. Well, uh, panel... I must say, a smashing beginning, but let's see if we can't trip you up now. Would you be good enough to sign in as the next challenger, sir? Steve? Steve Mozaleski, right, sir? Master? Master Sergeant. Now, you all better be careful, because I read a book, and they told me Master Sergeants are real tough when they want to be tough. Uh, where are you from, sir? Scranton, Pennsylvania. Scranton, Pennsylvania. Well, this is your hometown. Not necessarily, of oh, course, in, my, in right. the uh, service you can be in many places, uh, depending on the whims of the Pentagon, I would imagine. Right. Well, I tell you what, if the panel, I dare say, has wondered why you're here in uniform, you have the basic identification. But uh, the sergeant does something very interesting in the army. This is what you have to find out. To help you find out, take a walk in front of the panel, will you? Sergeant. Look very intellectual, Sergeant. Oh, aye. Thank you. All right, Sergeant, if you come over here, please, and sit down next to me. We'll get back to the beginning here. You know how we score this operation? Yes, Mr. Dana. All right, fine. You know how we score it. We'll let the folks at home and those who are here in the theater with us know what your line is. All right, panel, I guess it will not come as a great shock and surprise to you that Sergeant Mozaleski is salaried. With that announcement, <laughs> we will begin the general questioning with, uh, well, Mr. Parr, why don't you take a shot at this? I think he's a soldier. Yeah, that's your right. <laughs> this, uh, is there a product involved in what yes. you do in the Army? Yes. There's a product involved in it? Is this used by the servicemen? Uh, Yes, uh, it is. Post. Is this a useful item for s soldiers? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you, know? do, you uh, I, do you cook this uh, in the mess hall? <laughs> or, uh, no. <laughs> is it served on toast? Is that the gimmick? <laughs> no, I would say that probably, uh, well, no, I better not. I'll give too much away, but I think there's a lot of same thoughts going through same minds, <laughs> don't you? That makes it one down to nine to go, and Miss Francis. Uh, do you have anything to do with heavy weapons of any kind? No, ma'am. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Sergeant, is the... They're uh, often served in the mess hall. Excuse me, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Sergeant, is the uh, item with which you are most intimately connected in the Army issue? Yes. Uh, does... Did you say tissue or issue? issue. Issue. Oh, issue, yes. Issue, issue dear Charlie. Issue dear John, yes. Uh, Sergeant, is it, would it be issued to a recruit when he first mustered into the Army in the, in the original equipment that is given to him? Would this object be included? Yes. It would? Yes. Is it something to wear? Yes. Uh, does he wear it in such a way that when he would line up before the top sergeant, it would be visible to said top sergeant. Yes. It would be. Yes. Uh, does he wear it above his waist? No. <laughs> <laughs> Three down and seven to go. What's the matter, sergeant? <laughs> All right, Miss Kilgallen. He sighed as if he wished he did. Uh, <laughs> well, does he wear it below the knees? Yes. Well, is it some type of uh, 
something that goes on the feet or legs. Yes. Is it, uh, is it squashy rather than very, very stiff? <laughs> You mean squashy, you mean like, for instance, a sponge? No, or... not really. Uh, well, would he put it on first thing in the morning? Well, you could say in a manner of speaking he'd put yes. it on first Before thing in the morning. Before going to the mess hall? Yes, so I would, I would think so. Uh, would would um, all soldiers get this, not just special kinds like paratroopers or... All soldiers would yes. get this. Mm -hmm. All right. Get ready, Jack. Uh, is it something that goes inside the shoe? Something that goes inside the shoe. That would make it four down and six to go, Mr. Parr. I have the feeling that this might be something to do with women and wax. Do you issue something to women? Are you stationed near a WAC recruiting or something, and it's women, no. we're going for some, a woman's no, garment? No. Now, you can quit any time now, Jack. You get your own <laughs> about 10 minutes. You know? always do that on this show. I thought sure it had something to do with the Brazil. Five down and five to go, Miss Preston. <laughs> well, if it isn't something that goes inside the shoe, is it anything to do with the shoe itself? Yes. Yes. Is it the boot? The shoe, the boot, is the, the product you have identified it, but now all you have to do is to tell us what the sergeant has to do with the aforementioned product to wit the shoe. Oh, he doesn't? I thought that Bennett had already established that he handed out the issue. No, he just has no. something to do with it. He just has something to you do with You want to ask the... the question, does he issue them? That'd be fine. Why would it be fine? So you can give me a no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> does he see that the shoelaces are tickety-boo? A tickety-boo? <laughs> no, he uh, doesn't have any responsibility for the tickety-boo department. That makes it six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Sergeant, are you the very useful fellow who makes sure that the shoes fit no. No. That's seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you purchase large quantities of shoes for the Army? No, ma'am. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Parr. This thing that you do, you do this in the Western Hemisphere? <laughs> <laughs> in the Western Hemisphere, you do it? Maybe not. <laughs> well, substantially, yes, I would say. Have you, you at any time in your life at any time ever worn gym shoes? Have I? Yes. Yes. I've set it up, Arlene, I'll kill it. I've got it all set up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you pass, I you? pass to you, dear. Are these boots any different from any other kind of shoes? I mean, would they be anything like ski boots and that sort of thing? No, ma'am. They well, wouldn't be any small, different. Small conference. Maybe he measures them for any old shoe. Well, what a... Horseshoes. What? <laughs> Could be horseshoes. Snowshoes. Gum shoes. Well, snowshoes, they, any of them. Well, if you had a good one, we've had a grand conversation, and I think that... Uh, I love everything. To be fair, we would have to say that sometimes the type of footwear you made specific mention of might well be connected with what it is that the sergeant is trying to do constructively while he wears the uniform of the United States Army. I want to thank you, John Of course, perfectly all right. <laughs> Well, I don't really know. Is it, is it, in, is it only the, the only thing I ask is, is it an unusual kind of footgear? I mean, does he work with the ski troops or does he work with the... Well, that is not vitally important. So we'll just oh, give you quite. a flat old no. Oh, right. Greg, I'm going to turn in the, the chips for all of you because I don't think you'd get this. It's a fascinating occupation. The sergeant tests army shoes. There's a track and he walks around and round and round and round this track sometimes two months on one assignment. Would you That's like to right. walk for us, shoes. sergeant? Well, well, we accelerate wear, and we wear them out on his track in about a month or two. Well, all I can say, Sergeant, is you did a great deal more to that than that to get all those nice ribbons you're wearing. <laughs> that he did. That he did, and he wore out the panel, to wit note. And thank you. It was a wonderfully interesting occupation, and nice to have a member of the United States Armed Forces with us. Good to see you. One of the things that uh, gave me a little trouble, I was afraid that Arlene or Miss Dorothy would say, is this something that I could do or would like to do? Oh. Knowing them both to be hikers by nature, I wouldn't <laughs> know how to answer the question. You've given the whole thing away. <laughs> okay, so we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just...
Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which, as I think you all know, my friends on the panel are blindfolded. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Mm -hmm. yes, Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, in the case of our mystery celebrity, we depart from the usual pattern of questioning. You ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and let's begin the ceremonies with Mr. Bennett, sir. Well, I have to do an elimination, uh, John. The Jack Bennies and Burns and Allen have been all around New York this week, and I just want to make sure, are you any one of that famous quartet? No. That's one down and nine to go, Miss <laughs> Kilgallen. Have you any children? Yes, I do. Mr. Parr, are you in the theater? Yes, I am. Are you also in pictures? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm also in pictures. Uh, well, do you, on, in pictures, do you ever sing and dance? Only half of that could be considered to be right. Only half. <laughs> and we're not too sure at this time of that. <laughs> All right, Miss Gilgallan. Well, do you ever play dramatic roles? Oi. <laughs> what? Oi? <laughs> Is that it? Is that I didn't know whether I got a yes or a no. You got an oi. That was just uh, discussed at the whole fort. Oh. Uh, uh, no, I think the answer is no. Mr. Parr? Is it Judy Holliday? No, that's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Would you be considered a comedian? Oh, uh... Very funny. I'm making a desperate attempt at that sort of thing, yes. Mr. Sir? Uh, have you ever been mentioned in the same league with Marilyn Monroe? I think that all of us have. <laughs> Miss Gilgallan. Are you Sherry North? Sherry North is right. You <laughs> just gave us... <laughs> Mr. Parr, you can take it off now. <laughs> How are you? Huge, <laughs> we're missing. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Now put it back on. <laughs> now put it back. Now, Miss Sherry North <laughs> has just given us uh, an example of how to be very popular. That's the name of your new picture, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh -huh. How to be very popular. She came and was a very generous guest, made some witticisms, looked very pretty. It wasn't too tough for you all to get. When is your picture going to open? I think it will come out about the uh, 21st of this month uh, at the Roxy. Well, we all read... Uh, at least I've read, and I'm sure my colleagues have read good things about it, and I hope that it's a great screaming success. I which, think that you will find which it. Which is the half that you did, the dancing or the singing? The dancing. The dancing. <laughs> Never sing? <laughs> you may. Bennett doesn't either, but that's his way of being very, very popular, <laughs> you see. I think uh, that could be considered mine, mine too. <laughs> well, thanks very much for being our guest. Would you say hello to the panel? It's nice to have had you with us, ma'am. Thank you. New York, but now let's see what our panelists can do with another challenger. Would you sign in, please, sir? Jack B. Jack B. Corn, right, sir? Where are you from, sir? Fort Worth, Texas. Fort Worth, Texas. Fine. <laughs> nice to have you come to the United States. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, would you just take a quick walk in front of the panel so they can get a closer look at you? Hi, Hi how are you? Hello, Mr. Corn. All right, Mr. Corn, over here, if you will, sit down next to me. First of all, do you know how we score the operation? 
Yes, sir. Good, then let's let the folks at home and our guests here in the theater know exactly what your line is. would announce that you are self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Mr. Corn, uh, does what you do uh, amuse or entertain people or make them feel better or happier? Well, not no. I'd say no on that. You'd say no? What would you say, John? <laughs> the question tended in its latter stages to become all-encompassing. I was hoping. Therefore, we will ignore the latter stages and give you a no. Oh. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Parr. It is not in the, in the concept of entertainment, uh, a question that can be answered yes. Something to do with cattle. Something to do with cattle. That would make it two down and eight to go. Miss Francis. Do you work in an enclosure when you work? No. A uh, small conference. Baby, it's cold outside. We'll uh, revise that and say yes on that. Is it sometimes, yes. sometimes he's inside of something. Yeah. Uh, are a you whale. Pardon me? A whale. <laughs> That's a witticism. No, it isn't really. It's pretty dull, isn't it? I'm sorry. His name is Jack, not Daniel. Uh, or who was it? What? It wasn't Daniel. <laughs> Joshua. <laughs> um, who was that? Though? Uh, Jonah. I wouldn't trumpet that sort of I thing around if I were you. <laughs> What? I'm lost. <laughs> it's the heat, uh, not the humility. Do you have anything to do with anything that is mechanical? Yes. That's nice, isn't it? <laughs> do you wear something other than what you're wearing now when you're on the job? Well, yes. Do you ever go up in the air? Yes. In Texas, there are several helicopters. Do you have anything to do with the helicopter business? No. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Seff. You have about a minute and a half to go. Mr. Korn, when you go up in the air, is it in some kind of a structure that is attached to the earth at the other end? Uh, would you repeat that, please? <laughs> well, by, by that I meant, would it, might it possibly be an oil derrick or something of that sort? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Korn. When you take off, are you completely detached from the earth? Well, <laughs> yes. I mean you and whatever you're in. Yes, that's yes. right. But you are in something. Yes. Is it some type of flying machine? Yes. Uh, do you pilot it? Uh, primarily, no. No, he, that is, <coughs> he does not pilot. He's busy I doing other pilot, things. But, oh. but, the pilot is sort of accessory. Five down and five to go, Mr. Parr. Time for about two questions. Do you fly now and pay later? Fly now and pay later? Oh, no. <laughs> no. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Do you have anything to do with jets? No. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Are Sir. You do you test the new kind of machine? Uh, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Eight down and two to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you have anything to do with sky writing? No. I doubted one to go, and I've got to flip the last one on time, but I don't think you'd have gotten it. Mr. Korn is a professional rainmaker. He seeds the clouds with silver iodide and makes the rains oh. fall out of the heavens. Thank you very much, sir. And I would say one word. I was out in uh, Dearborn at this weekend with my youngsters, and I thought of Fred Allen because we were in a steel mill. I don't know why, but Fred is recovering from an appendicitis, and it's going to make uh, a lot of difference to all of us to know that he's coming along well, and that we do know tonight. We'll be back in just a moment. Par, our thanks for so ably representing Fred with us tonight. It's been nice to have you with us. Until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Dorothy. Good night, John. Good night, Fred. Good night, Jack. Good night, Fred. Good night, Arlene. Good night, Fred. Good night, Arlene. Thank you, Jack. It was nice to have you with us. Good night, Fred. Good night, Moby Dick. <laughs> I'm going to introduce you to that Bible lady who won all that money. Nice Good night, Fred. Good night, John. <laughs> Good, night, Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on Joshua in the Whale. Good night. <laughs> Transportation for What's My Line is arranged through American Airlines, America's leading airline serving 77 major cities throughout the United States, Canada, and Mexico.
This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network.